and in God's grace, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Lord, we confess that we are rushing headlong into Christmas. It is just days away, and we still have so much to do. Our preparations are far from complete, and we are exhausted. We wish this whole thing were over so that we can rest. Forgive our shortcomings and our shortsightedness. You have poured upon us blessing after blessing, daily reminding us of your love and presence. Give us patience. Slow us down. Remind us of the ways in which you are present with us, not wrapped in packages, the abundance of food, but in the love and compassion that is brought to all. Forgive us, we pray. Make us truly ready to receive your love and the gift of the Christ child. Amen. The light of God's love shines upon each of us in the gifts of God's love, Jesus Christ. And this is given for you. Rejoice! You are loved by God, now and forever. Amen.
know, they may be just a quintet today, but I think they sounded fantastic. We'll be here once again for our wonderful <laughs>
scripture reading this morning from the Old Testament is from the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 7 through 12. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep before his shearers is silent. So he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with affliction. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see, he shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion of the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death, and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That ends the Old Testament reading. The Gospel reading is from the book of John, verse 10, chapter 10. Verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you, God. That was Matthew or John chapter 10, verse 11 through 17, with the notes that I left for Bobby. Only say 11, so that's my fault. My apologies. Will the youth please come forward and perform the 12 symbols of Christmas? Yeah, I guess. 
He still flows up the house and gets in the water. I'm so glad you're excited about it. But you have to remember that this stuff means something as well. What do you mean, Mom? Why do we celebrate Christmas? It's Jesus' birthday. It's when we remember that Jesus came into this world as a baby. That's right. Why do we put all this stuff in our house? Well, let's talk about some of this stuff and what it means. Let's start with the evergreen tree that we decorated. An evergreen tree is a very appropriate thing. It is evergreen, always green. It does not become dormant in the winter as other trees do. The color green represents new life and needles of the evergreen tree we always remember. It symbolizes our everlasting life with Jesus Christ. We should be as a tree, always full of life, never becoming dormant in our lives with Christ, as our arms are lifted heavenward. The bread of God is the one who comes down from heaven. He gives life to the world. John 6:33. I just thought it was a tree. Yeah, I didn't know that it meant something. What does the other stuff mean? How about the ornaments? We have so many blessings. Ornaments are used to decorate Christmas trees each and every year. People look for the perfect ones to fit on their trees. A Christmas tree just wouldn't seem complete without our ornaments. Ornaments can symbolize the blessings in our lives. Our lives just wouldn't be complete without God's blessings. Everything we have is due to God loving us so much that He wants to shower us with His blessings. Just as ornaments are all different shapes and sizes, blessings are all different as well. God picks and chooses each blessing for us so that it will be just right. Next time you decorate your tree, as you put up each ornament, think of a blessing that God has given you. I think you'll find that you'll have ornaments before you can run out of blessings. Every man shall give as he is able, according to the blessings of the Lord your God that he has given to you. Deuteronomy 16, 17. We have so many blessings. We have our home and family. God has given us many blessings. But there's so much more. How about we talk about the lights and candles? Lights and candles are used to give light. When a room is full of darkness, it is dark. But if you light a single match in a dark room, the room is light. There may be more darkness, but the light overpowers it. We are that light. We can be a single light in the world of the darkness. We must share our light with the world so that the light increases. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Matthew 5, 14 through 15. <coughs> I, I love the lights. These look so cool. Let's put on more light. We are the lights for God. Exactly. Let's put these bells on next. The bells ring out to guide the lost sheep back to fold, signifying that they are all precious in the eyes of the Lord. Jesus is our shepherd, and he laid down his life for us, so that we may spend eternity with him in heaven. He is calling it us to follow him through his word. Are you going to listen? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. John 10, 11. The bell sounds so beautiful.
The star was their guiding light to the city. God was the wise men's travel agent of sorts, leading them to the greatest destination known to them, the Savior. We now have his word as our guiding light to lead us to be with him in heaven. Are you going to follow him? And behold, the star which they had seen in the east went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. Matthew 2, 9 through 10. I bet that the star was their guiding light. They were able to follow the star of Jesus. And that must have been an amazing journey. I'm glad the Bible is our helper in leading us. Yes, God's word leads us to Jesus. Well, I think our tree's almost finished. We just have to put the angel on top. Our tree looks beautiful. Imagine you are a lowly shepherd watching over your sheep. This night seems no different than any other than all of a sudden an angel of the Lord is in the sky above you telling you of the Savior's birth, you a shepherd. Why did God send an angel to tell shepherds? Because the messenger that God had about the birth of Jesus was for all people, not just for the light, not just for the Jew, everyone. God chose a special messenger to tell the lowest of people in the world's eye of his son's birth. God looks at the heart, not what the world looks at. Think of this. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Luke 2, 9 through 11. Our true looks beautiful. I wouldn't change anything. The angel was like a messenger of God. The angel told the good news of Jesus' birth. <coughs> Decoration with holly on it. 
remember what was done for you so that he could spend eternity with you? I know that I will. And twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. Matthew 27, 29. <laughs> It makes me feel blessed to know him. He went through all that for me. Amazing! That leads us to this wreath that we're going to hang on the door. The wreath has its evergreen branches that then hang as to so that the man's touch had a no beginning or end. Just as there is no beginning or end in Jesus' eternal darkness, just as the belief looks the same throughout and seems not to change, so the belief will always be the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. I just love how it looks on her door. Yes, it really makes me look good. This is a reminder of how we've changed and grew. You kind of wonder about the presence of the man that we need? You'd be surprised. These days, the world has forgotten the reason for Christmas. Most people seem to think that getting presents is the greatest thing about Christmas. Other people seem to think that presents have nothing to do with Christmas. Well, they're both wrong. The wise men came to visit Jesus as a young child and gave him presents. They gave him gold, frankincense, and myrrh. They offered him gold as a king, paying him tribute. Frankincense as a god, for they honored God with the smoke of incense. And myrrh as a man that should die, for myrrh was used in the bombing dead bodies. These men, these wise men, saw this child and knew that he's a king, is a god, that he would die for the sins of the world. How can anyone with the knowledge that we have now not believe? The wise men went to the house where they saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. For they then they opened their treasures. They gave him gold, incense, and myrrh. Matthew two eleven. I love to get presents.
I know there is not meaning in the cookie. Making cookies is a favorite pastime for most families during the Christmas season. Cookie cutters are used to turn ordinary dough to edible masterpieces. God doesn't use cookie cutters when he, creates, when he creates each one of us. He makes every one of us so special and unique that he would have to bring one break the mold after he has one use. He is the potter and we are his clay. He wants us to mold us he wants to mold us. Into his masterpieces, we only need to be mindful of it to find his end. Behold, like the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. Jeremiah 18 6. Psalter this week, who will read from Psalm 7. O Lord my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all of my pursuers and deliver me. Or like a lion, they will tear me apart. They will drag me away with no one to rescue. O Lord my God, if I have done this, if there is wrong in my hands, if I have repaid my ally with harm, or plundered my foe without cause. Then let the enemy pursue and overtake me, trample my life to the ground, and lay my soul to the dust. Rise up, O Lord. In your anger, lift yourself up against the fury of my enemies. Awake, O my God. You have appointed a judgment. Let the assembly of the peoples be gathered around me, and, you, and overtake it, your seat on high. The Lord judges the peoples. Judge me, O Lord, according to my righteousness and according to the integrity that is in me. O let the evil of the wicked come to an end, but establish the righteous. You who test the minds and hearts, O righteous God. Please rise as you pray. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we prepare for the birth of our Lord and Savior, we thank you for the beautiful children in our church family. We pray that you will continue to bless them and guide them to continue to grow in their walk with Christ. We pray that you will protect them 
and us so that we may teach them about their faith and show them through our actions and discipleship what it means to truly follow you. Today as we prepare to celebrate Christmas together with our families and with friends and within the church, we are thinking of those who are unable to be with their loved ones. Please be with those who are sick, those who do not have family or friends, those who are serving our nation and deployed to a faraway land, those whose job requires them to be away, police officers, doctors, nurses, and other first responders, and anyone who is forced to stay away this season. Please be with them, Lord. Lay your hand upon them. Bring them comfort and peace. Bless them for their service to our community, nation, and the world. We pray these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Our closing hymn today is A Little Town of Bethlehem. It is number 121 in your hands.
depart and serve.